Okay. All right. So um, I want to thank the organizers very much for inviting me to give a talk. It's quite an honor, and I am really enjoying it here in Rio. It's very nice, uh, as I think everybody else is, judging by yesterday. So um, what I'm going to talk about today, uh, this morning, for those of you who will see it, who will be awake, uh, it's Poisson traces and D modules on Poisson varieties, and it's uh, joint work with Pavel Edinger. So I apologize in advance, those of you who have seen the talk before, um, but uh, I think many people have not. So I'm going to start from the beginning. So uh, I'll talk about Poisson and Hochschild traces, some examples and computational results, a conjecture, a theorem, D modules, and then the proof of theorem, if I get to all of that. All right, so let's begin. So what are Poisson and Hochschild traces? So uh, I'll let X be an affine Poisson variety. That means that it equals spec OX, and this is a Poisson algebra. So this will be probably the first and maybe only talk on this subject where I'm not going to recall what a Poisson algebra is. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, for obvious reasons. So, um, so that's the setup, and then what I want to consider is um, zero at Poisson homology. This is HP0 of OX, which is defined as OX mod brackets. Okay? And then we have the dual, which is Poisson traces. So Poisson traces are functionals on OX uh, that kill brackets. And this is the dual. All right. Technical problem. Okay. So, um, so that's, that's that. And now let's consider an analogous story. And that will be, uh, so this, these are, I'll just denote this by HP0 OX stuff. Okay. So then an analogous story is Hochschild traces. So we have again zero with Hochschild homology. So A is just an associative algebra now. And then H H zero of A is A mod ordinary commutators, A B minus B A. And then we have the uh, traces. Again the dual. All right, so that's the story. Now, let me recall also why it is that these are called traces. And that's because if rho from A to and V is a finite dimensional uh, representation, then uh, we have the trace of rho uh, is a Hochschild trace. Right? It kills commutators. Okay, so, so this is true whenever you have a finite dimensional representation. And then furthermore, if rho 1 to rho m are uh, distinct, irreducible finite dimensional reps, well, then we have that these traces are linearly independent. which will then imply, of course, that so we deduce from all of this that the number of um, finite dimensional irreps 
is less than or equal to the dimension of this zeroth homology group. Um, of course, if this dimension is infinite, then it doesn't really tell you anything. Okay, but I'm going to be interested in cases where we can prove that it's finite dimensional and maybe even give an explicit number, which is its dimension. Okay, so now I would like to give, for a call, a more explicit relationship between these two gadgets here, and that is uh, through deformation quantization or, or just filtered quantization, really, either way. And so now let's suppose, so... Um, so, uh, quantization. So, let's suppose that A is a filtered associative algebra. And by this, I'm just going to mean, let's say, non-negatively filtered. And let's, let's use less than or equal to, actually, so that it's clear. Okay. Well, then, uh, we have GUR A, which is equal to the direct sum of A less equal to I mod A less equal to I minus 1. And if it's, if it's commutative, then this implies that it's actually Poisson. Uh, so, how, how does that work? Um, so, if if uh, D is the max positive integer such that, um, such that whenever we take uh, A, uh, such that whenever we take A, B, well, let's say we'll take A less than or equal to I, A less than or equal to J, and this commutator will lie in A less than or equal to A plus J minus D, Right, which will have to happen if it's commutative, then we say that the bracket of GUR I A, uh, f f this should be for all I and J, so I want to have just one D. Right? Then we say that um, GUR I A and GUR J B is going to be just defined to be GUR I plus J minus D of A B. This is how it's defined. Okay, so probably most of you knew that. Uh, but so because of this, we deduce uh, a nice corollary, which is also very well known, and that is that uh, we have a surjection from HP0 of GUR A onto GUR of HH0 of A, right? that follows exactly from the star. Okay, and so now, uh, so now, um, as a result of this, we get that, uh, that um, the number of finite dimensional irreps of A is less than or equal to now this dimension which is now going to be less than or equal to the Poisson homology dimension of the graded. Okay, so now this means that um, if we can bound the dimension of HP0, then we're going to deduce a bound on a number of finite dimensional irreducible representations of every quantization. So this is actually a nice uh, result because you could have many different quantizations, of course, in general. So, thus, for all quantizations, and this, by this I mean filtered, but you can do all of the same story for deformation quantizations. <coughs> for all quantizations uh, of O x, then the dimension, the number, so the number of finite dimensional irreps is less than or equal to this fixed dimension, just this Poisson group. Okay. So this is the motivation um, and sort of the connection with these traces. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to number two here. 
Um, so I guess I'll leave the outline for now. All right, so now I want to give a few examples of what this group looks like. Okay, so um, examples. So first of all, um, let me do some infinite dimensional examples. So we can take uh, x equals any, we can take any um, affine variety, right? And now we can say ox equipped with the, the zero bracket is Poisson. So this is the most trivial. Bet you didn't think I was going to say something that trivial. So what do you get now? HP zero of ox is, of course, equal to ox itself. This, of course, will in general be infinite dimensional. This is the worst you can have. But it's just an example. Okay. So let's do something a little bit less trivial. Now let's consider x equal to g star, where g is a Lie algebra. Okay. So now we get that hp0 of um, O G star, by the way, this is of course sim G, obviously. And this is just going to be O G star, we um, quotient by, uh, by G. Okay. Uh, but now, um, uh, if, 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 furthermore, let's say that G is Lee. <laughs> capital G, where G is uh, connected and reductive, let's say that. And now we get also that this HP0 uh, can be considered as just this simpler thing. Okay, but now, however you view it, either this or this, of course, we see that in general this will be infinite dimensional. But, so I find this orbit space easier to think about. Okay, so, these, so this is a very interesting, of course, I don't need to say, it's a very interesting example. I'm not going to really consider it too much, maybe a little bit, but it's a very interesting example, uh, even though it's infinite dimensional. So on the no is what I said just now, this morning, that doesn't really give you much in this case. Okay, but I'm mostly going to be interested in finite dimensional examples, uh, cases where HP0 is finite dimensional. So let's do some more examples. Okay, so finite dimensional. So these are what I'm mostly interested in. And so, of course, we have uh, x is equal to t star z, where z is, let's say, a smooth, let's say, uh, connected affine. And let's say its dimension is positive. Okay. So now what we get is hp0 of O T star Z is zero. Okay? Um, and, of course, we can view this uh, algebra if we want more explicitly. Um, but let me just leave it like this for now. And so now, uh, let me go to a more general example. Of course, you probably guessed it. We can say X is symplectic. Okay, so... Now, if x is symplectic, uh, what is the general story we get? Well, this is well known. We get that hp0 of ox is equal to the top cohomology of uh, x. And here, top is equal to the dimension of x. Right. So, um, so uh, when, what's the math, by the way? Um, so if we have f, a class of f in here, then this is going to map to f times d vol x, right? And the d vol x is, of course, this symplectic form to dim x over 2. Okay. So we have a nice isomorphism. 
once you understand this, of course, this immediately implies this zero, which isn't immediately obvious to me uh, initially, but this is true. Nice trivial exercise if you're still asleep is why I need to mention positive. Okay, so um, that's a couple of examples. Maybe I should do a more interesting example now. And so let's do that. So what else can we do? We can consider quotients by finite group, right? Okay, so this is, uh, this is a nice thing to consider. So let's say, for example, that G is sitting inside of SP of V, and V is a finite dimensional symplectic vector space, and G is finite. Okay, so now what we have, actually computing HP0 of this uh, functions is quite complicated. It's uh, difficult to compute in general, quite difficult to compute HP0. And so there's no general answer. Uh, even though for quantization of this, if you use the while algebra, there's its explicit answer for what that is. It was con that was in a paper of uh, Alev, Lambre, Farinati, and Solitar in 2000. But for this, um, this Poisson case, this is very difficult. Uh, in general. However, the theorem of Brest, Eddinghoff, and Ginsburg, which was sort of the uh, impetus for this work, and that is that it's finite dimensional. Okay, so this is what we know. It's not much, but it's something. And, uh, and this generalizes and we can generalize it as a consequence of what I'll tell you later. I don't know that any proof was written down before that. Uh, we could also take HP0 of uh, O of, uh, let's just say, Y mod G. It's finite dimensional, where Y is now symplectic, just a symplectic affine variety. Of course, by symplectic, I always mean smooth. In general, there are other meanings of this term, and G acts by automorphisms. So we can generalize this, David. It's still finite dimensional. Okay, but I'm going to give a more general finiteness result later, but I just wanted to mention that. But before I get to the general theories, uh, I wanted to give a very explicit case where this can be computed, um, and in fact where this can be computed. Um, so let me do that. Um, so now, case, so computable case. So let's let y be a symplectic variety, affine. And now instead of considering y mod g, Let's consider y to the n mod sn only. So this is, or you can, or I can think of this as, I'll write it sny, the symmetric power of y. Of course, as you know, O oh, sny is uh, the nth symmetric power of O y in an algebra. Well, so now we have a theorem for what the answer is. Uh, still, I think I have not yet posted it. I should have, uh, but it will be posted soon. Um, and so this is going to say that um, uh, that uh, HP zero. So we can compute all of these. So put together, it's most convenient that you put together for all n. And now we say that the direct sum of HP zero of O S N Y star is isomorphic as a graded algebra to, um, uh, to what? 
to sim t times hp0 of oy star t. So this means, this means a polynomial algebra in one variable. So the grading on this side is the t grading. And here we just have this n grading. Okay, so we have an isomorphism of graded algebras. Um, and what is the map? Well, let me describe. So this is a symmetric algebra. So elements here will be of the form t to the r1, t1, tensor, dot, 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 tensor, t to the rm, tm. Okay, and just to be clear, just to be absolutely clear, it's early, these t's don't commute past the tensor product, right? Okay, so, so anyway, I only need to describe what one of them does, okay, because I said it was a graded algebra map. Oh, I hate to move it all the way to the other board, but I'm out of space, so I'll go back over here. Yeah? Yeah, so... Uh, if y is a vector space, any symplectic vector space, then we're going to get zero here. Hmm? Uh, it's zero, except for n equal to zero, of course. Right? Because for zero dimensional, this was the comment we made earlier, for the zero dimensional vector space, we don't get a zero HP zero. Okay. Is it all right? So it's, it's actually easy to see because if you take a, uh, if you take a um, symmetric power of a vector space, then if you look at the invariant algebra, you have a linear invariant element, the sum of all the variables. Well, this is the explicit way to see it. By bracketing with that, you'll get everything. It's a permutation action. I, I didn't say anything about resolutions. Yeah, I'm going to later. No resolutions yet. I will say about resolutions. This doesn't always have a resolution in the symplectic sense, of course, only if y is a surface. But, well, what can you do? All right, but I'm talking about any symplectic variety here. No matter what the dimension is, it doesn't have to be two. All right, any other, any other questions about this? This is important, so. And, okay, so. Uh, is there going to be a result for any other degree of Poisson? That's a meta question. Yeah. The, you, hopefully, okay. if I get through all of the questions before yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. So, um, well, let me give this first. Okay, so I, have to, I had promised the map. T to the R times T. What does it map to? Well, probably some of you figured it out since I've been postponing writing the formula. So it is, so we're going to consider T to be an element of HP0 of OY star. So this is a, this is a trace, right? Okay, and so what, from one trace, T, we want to construct a trace not on OY, but on OSNY. What's the obvious way? Well, there's more than one obvious way. There's one correct obvious way for the purpose of this formula, and that is F1 tensor dot 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 tensor Fn maps to T of F1 Fn. Okay? This is the correct way. And if you think about it, you see why this is the correct way for the purposes of this formula, because these will be the things that you might think will generate as an algebra here. I could, the other obvious answers would be multiplying t by itself some number of times, but then you see that's generated. Is n and r are the same thing here? No, uh, uh, they were, but I'll get rid of one of them. Okay. The reason why I put r's here, yes, yeah, so is because I wanted their sum to be n, I was thinking. Okay, but let me just make one more um, remark. So, 
we mentioned already what this is, right? It's uh, h top of y star. Okay? So I just wanted to put that in there. Okay. All right, so this is the formula. Um, and so it's a, it's, the map is obviously well-defined. Okay, so the question is whether it's an isomorphism. And that's the theorem. Okay, so what does it say? Um, so what does this say? Well, it says that all, uh, all Poisson traces on SNY are obtained from a diagonal. Subvariety, which what by which I mean uh, something of form that's uh, um, that's the image. So we can take y cross cross y. We can embed by diagonal to the m uh, s r one y cross of the dot cross s r m y, and then we can uh, map to s n y, where n is equal to r one plus plus r m. So we take the image of this. So basically, you take functions on that. You pull back, um, push forward. Uh, you, you pull back functionals on functions here to get traces there. This is what it's saying. So what are these? These are just the symplectic leaves or closed symplectic leaves, closures of symplectic leaves. But anyway, just loosely speaking, these are symplectic leaves. So we see that there is some geometry going on here. So now, OK, so, so now let me say what the conjecture is. And then we'll move on to the theorem. So the, other, the point of this example, and aside from mentioning how it's related to symplectic leaves, is also to say that if y admits a quantization, a we get the same formula that the Hochschild homology of uh, of uh, S and A is also isomorphic to this sim T times H uh, H zero of A star T. And of course, this gadget also is isomorphic to top to ram of, um, of Y. As you know, so we deduce that the two are isomorphic. So this map I mentioned before, HH0 of SNA, GER, HP0 of, of uh, SNOX, is an isomorphism because we have the same formula, and uh, and so so now the question is when does this hold more generally? And um, here's a conjecture. So by the way, this doesn't hold. It's not an isomorphism for all of these cases, but in the case where we have this SN, it does hold. Okay. So now we we'll say the conjecture. By the way, this isomorphism here is a result of adding off an Oblomkov in O3. Or maybe it's actually a result earlier than that. In this specific case, I don't know. But so they prove a result that implies this. OK. This is the earliest I know. OK, so um, conjecture. If um, x is affine Poisson and x tilde, x is a symplectic resolution. Uh, so this should be proper and birational, all that. If this is a symplectic resolution, then we deduce that uh, then hp0 of ox should be isomorphic to hh0 of a 
for all quantizations A of OX. And of course, this should also be isomorphic to H top of X tilde. Okay? This is a conjecture. So, how does that hold here? Well, in the case when Y is a surface, then we also get this is isomorphic to H top, a well known result of uh, the Hilbert scheme of Y, which is the resolution. Of course, this is not an if and only if, obviously, because when, when Y is mentioned greater than 2, then there is no resolution here. Okay, so. All right, so that's. So, any questions about that? So, this is. Yeah, so in every case, it's still a conjecture, it's still open. So, in every case, which includes that one that you just mentioned, where we've computed HP0, this holds. So, every case where. Uh, where so, in the case of the nil put and cone and the slaughterly slices, we computed HP0. So. It's equal to what it should be by this conjecture. Fine, the nil potent cone. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hmm? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's this. Yeah, one dimensional here. Yeah. All right, so, um, so now, how does this uh, how does this tie into um, these other things? So um, yeah, so so um, I should also remark the note theorem also holds if we replace this is a separate proof, by the way. If we replace uh, y by a hypersurface singularity, isolated, quasi-homogeneous. By quasi-homogeneous, I mean it has a contracting C star action. So isolated, quasi-homogeneous surface singularity. So in fact, this theorem still holds this theorem about this HP0 being isomorphic to that, and also HH0 here, these theorems still hold in that case. And in particular, and so then uh, in the case, so in the case where Z is equal to a Kleinian singularity, C2 mod gamma for gamma in SL2, this is a particular case of a surface singularity of this type, we get also that HP0 of uh, O, o uh, of SN, well, OSNZ is isomorphic to HH0 of, let's say, uh, SN while group, while algebra of C2. Uh, with the uh, gamma invariance. And so what is this? Uh, this also can be known as, it's also uh, the same as O of uh, C2N mod this group gamma to the N semi-direct product SN. Okay. So in the case that um, gamma is equal to Z mod 2, then we get this type BN, uh, we get uh, this group is this type BN while group. And I might have my I might have my N plus or minus one wrong here. For those of you who are really on top of things. Okay, so and I should also finally remark that this, this previous theorem I mentioned, uh, the, the heart of the proof of it 
uh, amounts to showing that this, is, that this this result also is true. This isomorphism also holds for the type An. So we also get HP0 of O uh, C 2N minus 2 mod SN is isomorphic to C is isomorphic to HH0 of the while. And this, this isomorphism here is also, like I said, for all of these while invariants, this is, these results are a consequence of this paper, AFLS 2000. So we have this. And this, this result is basically amounts to that earlier theorem. This is the SIM theorem. This is the theorem that I mentioned before for the case of a vector space. All right. So, um, so there we go with that. Okay, so in all of these cases, and also these nil and cone cases and stuff, this conjecture is confirmed. Okay, but let me move on a little bit because I wanted to talk about the finiteness. So any other questions about any of those things? So uh, if I had wanted to say more, let me just say it. No. Let me just say it. Conjecture also true for the case where uh, x is equal to the nilpotent cone, which is, of course, resolved by this Springer resolution, and also these slaughtery slices <laughs> This is a transverse slice to the to E orbit to the adjoint orbit of E uh, sitting inside of G. Okay. So we also have it for that, and we can also replace N by any fiber of this uh, G, G, G. Okay. So we can do those things. For all these cases, the conjecture holds. All right, uh, so now I move on to um, to uh, this um, finiteness result. Okay, so um, so a finiteness theorem. So this conjecture is nice, but as as we've seen, there's a lot of cases where we've computed HP zero and it does not admit a symplectic resolution, and and uh, there is also this case. Uh, where it's hard to compute that I mentioned, the V mod group. So we want to be able to say something. And so there is this finiteness result in that case. So a more general version of it is this theorem, which I want to talk about. If X is an affine Poisson variety with finitely many symplectic leaves, So in particular, they're algebraic, right, these leaves. Uh, then um, HP0 of OX is finite dimensional. Okay. So this is what I wanted to talk about. And so this includes all of the cases that we've discussed where it's finite dimensional so far. So uh, EG in the case of V mod G, where G sits inside of SP of V, and this is a symplectic vector space, what other symplectic leaves? Well, are there are the uh, connected components of, we're going to take the uh, set of V 
uh, in V such that the stabilizer of V is a fixed group. And we're going to mod by the normalizer in G of this group for K sitting inside of G. So the K that appear here are called parabolic subgroups. Well, so since there are finitely many subgroups of G, and these have finitely many connected components, of course, we have obviously finitely many symplectic leaves, which I'm, it's probably obvious from other points of view. But, but, but so the point is that, in fact, we have a nice description of what the symplectic leaves are, not just that there are finitely many. Okay, so now let me go about, and you can say a similar thing for the case of a symplectic variety mod a finite group action. You just, uh, you globalize this. Okay, so, um, so now how do we prove this result? So to prove it, I need to move on to topic five, which is D modules. Okay, so, um, so uh, the problem with this, the problem with HP0 that makes it interesting and also hard is that it's initially a non-local object. I mean, this is a problem that occurs in many, obviously in many places. Um, very familiar. Uh, so it's non-local because, for example, as we see, if you just have CN, uh, the cotangent bundle of CN, then obviously, as I mentioned, the, the HP0 is zero, right? So it's not, a, it's not local in any simple way. So one way to solve this problem, one solution is we can view HP0 of OX star as the solutions and these functionals so we can view these as sort of algebraic distributions. Solutions in OX star of the equations C uh, times phi is zero, or F is in OX, and CF is its uh, Hamiltonian vector field. Right, so CF as a derivation, CF of G is the bracket of F and G. So we can view it as a solution of these certain equations. And so this suggests um, using <coughs> this algebraic theory of differential equations or D modules to uh, attack this problem. So let me try that. So to do it, um, we, we want the first thing we want to do is we want to say, well, what is the D module? that's related to these equations. Let's call this uh, star. So what's the D module? Well, uh, in the case where x is smooth, and we let dx be the algebra of differential operators on OX, oh, polynomial coefficients, right? Uh, OX coefficients. Then uh, a D module is just a module over DX, by the way. This is not true of the non smooth case. I'll get to that in a second. Let me first say it here. So, so if you have equations and you want to look at their solution, then that's associated to the D module where you quotient by those as relations. So, um, so the D module is it's just uh, mx, which I define as dx mod cf times dx for f ranging for every function in OX. So this is going to be a right D module. Okay. 
So this is the one that you get. Now, of course, we want to consider <coughs> x not just smooth, because all of the examples that I'm interested in are not smooth, since I'm interested in affine Poisson varieties. So we have to say something about that. So now if x uh, is not necessarily smooth, but x sits inside of v, and v is smooth, then we can view D modules as D modules on V supported on X. Right, this is the standard Kashiwara point of view. So from this point of view, what D module do we get? Um, well... We get um, mx will now be defined as dv mod, first of all, the ideal of x. This is the ideal of x times dx plus a span of vector fields uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is dv, right? dv uh, such that v restricted to x is Hamiltonian. Okay. In particular, it's, it, it's tangent to x. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we're going to get. And now, um, basic uh, lemma or theorem. Lemma, this... So by Kashiwara's equivalence, of the categories of D modules on X sitting inside of V or X sitting inside of a different space, V prime, we get the same object MX. So I don't really need to depend on the embedding here. So this is the object that we get. And so now, uh, how is it related? Uh, we recall that how is it related? I explain how it's related to HV0. The solutions are, uh, H, are Poisson traces. But so we can, we can give an even more explicit relationship. Uh, and so now, HP0 of OX is going to have been equal. It's nothing but, uh, but um, OX tensored over DX with MX. And this is... This is just the underived push forward of MX. Underived push forward to under pi from X to a point. Okay? So this is what we get. By the way, I, I want to just stop and make a meta comment before I continue, and that is it. So what, what, we, what what's happened here is we started with a Poisson variety X. We wanted to understand initially all quantizations of it. Uh, and in order to understand all quantizations of it, we reduce it to something about X itself. And now we're replacing X by a different non-commutative object, D modules on X, which is a quantization of T star X. So somehow, what we've gone is we have x, we have quantizations of x. Now we've instead gone in a different direction. Here we have dx, which is a quant of t star x. Somehow this is going to actually give us information back about these quantizations. OK, so just a little comment. But OK, so we've made this work. We have this theory. And now I'm probably being slowing up here. So, um, so I want to give you, actually give you the punchline and then say a couple words about the proof. So the punchline is as follows. There's a, exists a nice category of D modules called holonomic. So these are, by definition, a holonomic D module 
uh, on V is a uh, it's a D module. It's a finitely generated D module M uh, such that to say GUR M as a module over GUR DV is equal to O T star V is supported on the, has Lagrangian support. So as I've said it, this is not quite um, sure someone is going to point it out. M also has to be equipped with a filtration to talk about GUR M. But, so on the case I'm interested in, MX is just a quotient of DX. We know what its filtration is. So this is a technical point. Okay. So this is a holonomic D module. We have a basic theorem. If M is holonomic, and this implies that pi zero m is finite dimensional. Well, in fact, more generally, in fact, any push forward of a holonomic is still holonomic. And if you think about it, holonomic d modules on a point are just finite dimensional vector spaces. So that's why we have this theorem. Okay, so now we can reduce. Uh, uh, our statement, our theorem from before to a theorem about this D module, MX. So now, the finiteness theorem follows from theorem that MX is holonomic under these assumptions if X is finitely many Poisson leaves. Finitely many symplectic leaves. So actually sometimes this term uh, the, is holonomic is used to describe a variety with finitely many symplectic leaves. And so this was used already by Kaledin at least before we worked on this. And so it's, a, it's an interesting coincidence we get this MX which is holonomic. This immediately implies that this also gives an answer to Ezra's question that I had promised to say something about. I have a little bit of time. And so now, in fact, the whole, we can consider not just the derived push forward, uh, not the underived, but the whole derived push forward. In fact, we can consider the whole derived push forward of MX is finite dimensional. Um, this implies that the whole derived push forward is finite dimensional. So now we can make a definition that the, uh, the I. Poisson Duram homology of X is just this uh, L I pi star MX. Okay, so now we get, in particular, we get that, so let's call this, call it HP DR. I of X, O X maybe. Okay, and so we deduce that that H P zero, the ram of O X is always equal, of course, to H P zero of O X. This this was by definition, but for the higher ones, these are not the same because there's another definition of Poisson homology which is quite different from this one, and it will not necessarily be finite dimension. In fact. If you have a singular variety in general, the, um, the in general the Poisson homology, the total Poisson homology, may be infinite dimensional, even in this uh, case is of we're considering here. Okay, so um, for example, for the nilpotent cone, you'll have a infinitely many non-zero ordinary Poisson homology groups, but that doesn't happen for these Duram Poisson homology groups. So now we can have a, this conjecture generalizes to saying that if x, x is a symplectic resolution, then, um, then we can say that HP Duram star of uh, Ox is isomorphic to the H uh, dim x minus star of x tilde. 
So we can generalize this conjecture. And in fact, we can make a more general statement. Uh, by the way, this will also be isomorphic to HH, HH uh, star of a generic quantization of X. But for special quantizations, you can have a higher Hochschild homology, just like you can have a higher ordinary Poisson homology. Okay. So you generalize this to this, and in fact, this would follow from the statements that, um, so let's call this rho, this resolution, rho uh, that mx is isomorphic to the push forward, uh, well, the derived push forward. Uh, of um, of uh, M X tilde, which is nothing but the canonical D module. So I should have given an example. Now I guess I better say it now. Example: If Y is symplectic, then M Y is nothing but the canonical D module on Y. You can see it because it has only one symplectic leaf, and so if you quotient by the um, by the Hamiltonian vector fields, you just get uh, this wall one orbit, and so you just get constant solutions. And so, um, as a result of that, by the way, this this also tells us that if y is symplectic, then it's certainly at least this is the tri most trivial case. If y is symplectic, it's certainly true that H P Duram star of O y is isomorphic to H dim Y minus star Y. So this is certainly true then. So the most trivial case it had holds. Okay, so I'm probably I'm just about out of time here. Yeah, so I just uh, I don't really have time to talk about the proof, but um, let me see uh, what else, what I can say. So basically, without being able to actually explain the proof. Let's say what the what the main step is. The proof boils down to so if uh, if uh, X is a disjoint union of S I symplectic leaves, then a local computation at P in S I inside of X implies that uh, the support. The singular support, what we call the singular support of this D module, MX, uh, it sits inside of the um, solutions to these Hamiltonian vector fields is zero, which uh, sits inside of um, the disjoint union of these co normal bundles, TSI perp. Well, in each of these are Lagrangian. So remember that holonomic says that the singular support is Lagrangian. So this is what it boils down to. And this is, now it becomes a rather trivial thing to check, but I am out of time, so I don't want to, to push further into late territory. So I'll stop here.